So for this one, it's that topic, factoring a perfect squared trinomial with the leading coefficient. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna factor it like we normally would, right? You take this little invisible one times that one right there and you get the number one. There's only one pair that can <coughs> multiply to give you one, right? One times one. one, times one. And those obviously add to give me two, they right? Yes, but in order for them to give me a negative two, they would have to both be negative, right? Yep. And then you just put the V in here. And I only shortcut it because there was no number in front, right? So once I figured out the magic numbers and I figured out their signs, I just had to put a V in the front and I'm done. All this formula tells me is that it's because of the same exact thing, another way you can write it if they're exactly the same is to put a little square. Okay? You don't have to memorize that formula to do this problem. Okay? I don't suggest you do because then you start getting confused on when you can use it and when you can't use it and things like that. Okay? Yep. So if you just factor it like you have been factoring it, do what you know, if they're the same, notice you can write it like that. It's not wrong to write it like this, okay? But you can write it like that. So the same thing here. If I take my little invisible one and I multiply those, I get four. I have two combos that could give me four. Two times, yeah. But which one of those add to give me four? Two. 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 And since this says they have to be the same sign and this says positive, yeah. they're both gonna they're be both positive, positive, right? Too, yeah. And then the variable does not have a number in front, so I can just put x and x. And if they're the same, x plus 2 squared. Exactly. And that's it. So there's nothing new here. They try to make it seem like there's something new, but it's not. It's just the same stuff you've been doing. Okay? So don't overthink it. Yeah. Just, I know it's got this weird title, but whatever. It's the same thing. you're looking to do something. Right. So here, same thing, if I do 9 times 16, holy moly, that's going to be a big number. Let's see, 9 times 16, oh, 144. Do you know the factors of 144 that are going to add to give you 24? You got 12 and 12. Like, yeah. Uh, and don't those, don't those add? Yes, ma'am. You don't get to stop right there, right? <laughs> so those add to give me 24. But well, this well, says they're the same, and this says... They should be what? Negative and five, one's negative and one's five. Uh-huh. But can I shortcut? No, because you uh, got the three, the nine in front of the Right. So we cannot shortcut this one. We actually have to split that up the using the yeah. negatives. Right. So negative 12 and negative 12 does combine to give me negative 24. And negative 12 times negative 12 so does give me positive, positive 144. Yeah. Good. So then I'm going to bring down my 16, bring down my 9v squared, cut it in half. These guys have 3 and a v. So we get 3v minus 4. Bring down your minus. These guys have a... 3 in common. Not 3, not that guy. 16, 8, 2. They have more than 2. 4. You almost said it at the beginning and then you changed your... So the negative and a negative will give me positive 3v. Positive and a negative will give me negative 4. Make sure when you distribute that back, you get this. Same signs and all. Now when the bubbles match, or parentheses match, you take this out, but then what's left over? 3v minus 4. Mm-hmm. And because they're exactly the same? You can put parentheses 3 4 Right. Exactly. And that's it. I mean, you're not doing anything different. It's just at the end, that, oh, I can write it like this instead. Okay? So I'm not going to bother. You try that one. How about that? Let me pause the video so <laughs> it's not just recording the whole time we're trying. Yeah, the people in here are saying. Yeah. So you do this times this, right? Yep. That's 64. Yep. And then what adds to give me 16? I just eight, thought 8 and 8. Eight, yeah. So I kind of look at this as our, like my goal. Right? And that helps me, instead of having to go through all of them, I could probably think of them a little bit faster if you kind of know your end game, right? Okay. So I look at this and say, well, which numbers would multiply to give me 64 but add to give me the 16? So I figured 8 and 8, so we broke it up because they would have to be the same sign, right, in order to multiply to give you a positive. But because this is positive, then that means they would both be positive, okay? So I knew positive 8V, positive 8V would make 16V. 
Then we split it. These guys have 8V in common. We get 8V plus 1. These guys have nothing in common, so you take out a 1, and it doesn't change them, right? Then the parentheses are in common, so you take that out, but then 8V happens to be left over, and plus 1 happens to be left over as well. So since those are the same, you can just write it as um, 8V plus 1 squared, okay? So again, nothing is new here. This is the same thing. Um, the only difference here is that notice you have variables not only in the front, but you have variables in the back, okay? And if you're trying to use the formula, it could get a little confusing, but if you're doing the grouping, you're already dealing with those variables at the same time. So I'll do the first one, and then you can work on the second one. So for the first one, you would do this times this again, which I think was 144. Now this time I have to add, is this right? I don't think this is right. I think that should be a minus. I think I made a mistake there. Or not that, that should be a minus. But let me verify real quick. Dun, dun, dun. I don't know what I did there. These are bad, bad numbers. I think this should have been a minus. And this guy should have been Should have been a seven. I may have been pausing in between problems, doing other tasks, and got that one all mixed up. Okay, but still the number nine times sixty-four, or maybe that's what's wrong. Nine times sixty-four. Yeah, that was what was wrong. It might have been right. I don't know. <sighs> Let me see. Yeah, let's change this to 16. I'm totally off. There. 9 times 16 is 144. There we go. And we have to find numbers that subtract to give us 7. Okay? So we know it's obviously not 12 and 12, right? Because those do not subtract to give me 7. What else could work? What about the numbers I multiplied to get 144, 9 and 16? That's how I got 144, right? Yeah, if you subtract those, with those you, give you, seven. You, you do you, get seven. Yeah, yeah, you so, do. but... The, the, big, the 16 has to be in the front, correct? Correct. And it has to be positive, positive right? 16, because yeah. even though this says they're different, this yeah. is always the sign of the bigger one. Right. Okay? It's only when they're the same that that's the sign of both, right? Yeah. So here, I'm going to split this. I'm going to say 9y squared, and then I'm going to put the positive 16yx, keep the same variables, the minus 9yx, and then the minus 16x squared. So notice I keep these guys' variables, and I keep all of those variables. All of them are the same still. You cut it in half. What does this side have in common? Y, and then you get 9y uh, plus 16, uh-huh, yeah. you bring down your minus sign, these guys have what in common? Uh, x. Dun, 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 yep. yep. And so then a negative and a negative? It's a positive. Positive, positive 9y, y, yeah. a negative and a negative? A positive 16x. Uh, they have that in common, right? And then what's left over? Y minus X. Y minus X. Now, are these exactly the same? No. So could you write them as something squared? No. No. So be careful. Okay. What about this one? If I multiply an imaginary 1 times 81, what do you get? 
What numbers multiply to give you that 81, but add to give you 18? 9 times 9 is 81. Yep. And when you add them, you get 18, right? But you need a negative 18. Well, these have to be the same sign, so right? going to be negative. Negative and negative. Negative, right. negative 9xu, negative 9xu, plus 81u squared. Cut it in half. What does the first half have in common? X, so you get so X, X minus 9U. Mm -hmm. Bring down your minus. What do those guys have in common? U. More than you. U, 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 U. 9 oh, and you. Right. U9 okay, right. is fine, but okay. normally we put the number in front, right? right. <laughs> so then if I took out, well, negative divided by negative is positive, positive right? Yes. And all I have left is X. X. Positive and a negative? Is a negative. And what number? 9. And how many U's? One Just one U. Do these match? Yes, no. So we could take that out. But then what's left over in the front? X minus 9U, same thing, you can square it. Yes, these are the same, so you can square it. When I changed this one, I ended up making it not a perfect square. That's what happened there, okay? I think what I should have done is I should have left that as a positive 64, and I should have changed this to like a 24 or something like that. And then it would have worked out as a perfect square. But I didn't do it right, so it wasn't a perfect square. <laughs> okay, let's see. Now we get into the binomials. So just two, two terms. We have not done any of these yet so far in class. Okay, you might have been doing them on your own, but not in class. Okay, so here I have to have my formulas. And there's three formulas that you need to pay attention to what they look like and the names of them this one says a difference which means you minus right squares perfect squares this one says difference so again I'm minusing but what am I minusing Cube. cubes here this one says sum, which means you're adding right but you're adding cubes notice that nowhere in here does it say sum of squares right so you're not going to use the perfect square trinomial formula at all? No, right? never these for binomials, because that means you would have to have had three okay, oh, in okay. order to do it. Okay, I don't even like this. Okay, I would I just box it out and say, don't even use that. No, I look at it, Ms. Lopez. It's <laughs> yeah. trinomials, three, three. Right. Okay, I got you. If I'm doing my binomials, I'm only going to be looking at three, looking these at three. three. Yes. Now, the only other possibility I could have for a binomial, well, there's two, right? There's the sum of squares, which is missing from here. There's no formula for it. Why is there no formula for sum of squares? Because the sum of squares is prime. You cannot factor a sum of squares. There's no way, okay? So that's why there's no formula for it at all. The other thing is, is if I don't have squares or cubes, I just have like something weird and something else weird, and they're not perfect squares, and they're not both perfect cubes, okay? In that case, you most likely just need to factor out the GCF, and then it's factored, right? Um, it's only if you have a perfect square minus another perfect square or a perfect cube plus or minus another perfect cube that you can apply these formulas, okay? So for this one, you have a square here, so immediately my brain's going to think the difference of squares. Do I have a difference in the middle? Yes. I do, so I can use this formula. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to write down the formula just so you can see i think they use x and y yeah, in the thing yeah. but because i have y's i'm not going to use x and y i'm going to use a and b just because if i use the same variables it's real easy to get mixed up and confused okay so what i need to do here is i need to identify what is being squared in each of those two terms now the second term is very obvious it's obviously y squared right but what is it that's being squared in the front of the minus sign to give me 64? Eight. Eight. So instead of writing 64 minus y squared, you should be writing eight squared minus y squared. Put it in the form of the formula, because once you have it in the form of the formula, you're literally just plugging in the numbers into the formula, okay? So now I know what's being squared here, right? It's eight. So then over here, I'm going to put 8 and 8. Oh, then it's going to be 8 plus y and 8 minus y. Exactly. 8 oh, plus y, 
and 8 minus y. And if you're ever not sure, you can always check, right? You can go in there and foil it all out. Mm -hmm. And that would give me 64 minus 8y plus 8y minus y squared. What happens to these guys? Mm -hmm. And I get 64 minus y squared. So it checks out, okay? But this is what they want is the answer. Are those the same? Can I just put them together and square? No, no, they're different. They got different signs. Right, exactly. And I promise you, if the case then the formula would have had the little square on it right the formula wouldn't have left it as a plus b and a minus b so what is this one just looking at it u plus 7 and u minus you got it what about that one uh, v plus 12 and v minus 12 you got it so harder what about this one gonna have five z minus i mean plus nine and five z minus nine you're getting it there you go you got it and then what about this one i know it's gonna fast <laughs> two plus three y two minus three y right exactly good those are quick now here it doesn't matter or variables it's the only difference between the last one Okay, the first one they gave you was an introductory, right? Second one they gave you, oh, they put numbers on both terms instead of just one term, right? They're numbers on both terms. Numbers on both terms. Now, you've got numbers on both terms and you've got letters on both terms. It doesn't make a difference. Uh, it's still going to be 5z. Five, 5z. Five 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 Z. Z. Plus 6 and 5z. I mean, x, 6x. 6x, 5z minus 6x. Yep. And that will work out. Yep. And you could always check it to make sure. What about this one? That's 8v plus 3w and then 8v minus 3w. You got it. Okay. Are you guys seeing it? <laughs> yeah? Okay. You always like it when you get those because they're easy. Okay. This one. Notice that they're not squares, right? Yep, they're cubes this time. They're not even cubes. Is this guy cubed? Oh, no, no, no. You're right. You're right. Okay. No, only one of them is but they have stuff in common, don't they? Yeah, they got that Y. So you common. have to do that first. Always remember, you have to do that common stuff first. So what the biggest thing they have in common? What do you mean as far as the fact? The numbers? Mm hmm. Uh, I can see they have Y in common, but what about the number? Uh, I was going to eight, 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 eight times five. five. Mm hmm. Um, Nine times five is 45. Yeah, but nine doesn't go into well, there. Does five yeah. go into there? It should, eight, right? Yeah, yeah. So you get, oh, I forgot to put my number. Yep. So 80 divided by five, my calculator told me 16. 16. I took out a Y, so what do I have left? Uh, y, y squared, yep. And then 45 divided by five? five uh, nine. And I took out the Y, so there's no more Y. But look at this. So keep that there and factor that. What is it going to be? Uh, 4y plus 3 and 4y minus 3. You got it. Okay. So you have to take out the GCF, but then look at what you have inside. Are you, are if you, it were a trinomial, you would do it the trinomial are way, you right? Done? Are you done? This one, yes. Because oh, okay, look, okay. no squares, yeah. nothing. Okay. No Not squares, squares nothing. nothing. Okay. It has to have squares and cubes. That's a good question, though, because there is one today where you're not done when you finish that. <laughs> yeah, you'll, you'll notice you have still squares and you have to do it again. <laughs> so it, it does happen. Whoa. This one's tricky because you could do it wrong and then redeem yourself later and still get the right answer. Or you can just do it right from the beginning and you'll be fine. <laughs> but if you do it wrong from the beginning and then try to, you have to recognize that you need to redeem yourself later, okay? I'll do it both ways just so you can see what I'm talking about because it is recording. <laughs> so somebody listening is probably gonna wonder what I'm talking about. But the correct way is to always factor out the GCF first, right? Do these guys have something in common that I could factor out first? They got nine in common. They have nine in common. Yeah. And if I factored that out, I would have v squared all alone and then minus nine. Uh, right. And this is a difference of two perfect squares. So I have to keep factoring that little factor. V plus three, v minus v three. V plus three, v minus three. And this would be the answer. Now, had I done it incorrectly, 
had I not factored out the GCF at the beginning. These are two perfect squares, aren't they? Yep. So I could have done 3V min or plus 9 and then 3V minus 9. And FYI, it doesn't matter whether you put the minus here and the plus there, vice versa. As long as one of them's got a plus and one of them's got a minus. Okay? Now, this is not the answer, though. And the computer will tell you this is not factored completely. Because these two guys can actually factor out a 3. Yep. And these two guys can factor out a 3. And then what happens when you multiply the two 3's together? And then you have V plus 3 and V minus 3. So you could do it wrong at the beginning and then recognize, oh no, I could take some more stuff out. And that's how you redeem yourself, right? Eventually you get the correct answer. Or do it the way you're supposed to do it. Always take out the GCF first before you start doing anything else. Okay? Well, this way it's faster too, right? Yeah, it's less I'm lines sure to write. Lines, yeah. Okay. Try that one. So remember the rule. If they have something in common, you have to do that first. I'm going to pause. You're already getting it. Okay. You have U and B. U and B on the outside. Yep, nine u squared minus four. And then, okay. And then you're gonna break it down at uv to in, in parentheses. You should have three u plus two or three u minus two. Mm-hmm. Good. You did or you didn't? No, I didn't. What'd you get? Nine u squared. Did you just stop I there? Yeah. You have to keep remember because it says factor. Completely right. So if you start noticing squares and there's a minus, you're going to have to go one more, one more step. Okay? Good. What about this one? What do those have in common? Uh, X. X. And Y. And a Y. Yeah. What about the numbers? Eight, yeah. And That's eight. Yes, so if I factor that out, what do I have in the front? That would be Y squared. There you go. And okay. what do I have in the back? 4x squared. Do I have squares and a minus? Yeah. Then I have to keep going. So that should be like a y plus 2x and a y minus 2x. You got it. y times y makes y squared. Yeah. 2x times 2x makes 4x squared. Good. Okay, let's see. Let's try this one. They're trinomial, so they're not going to be the same formula. But let's look at it and see what's going on with this. Do they have anything in common? Do the whole thing? The whole, all three. Yeah, they got you in common. How many? To the four. Uh-huh, and what about a number? They got the four in common. Yep. And so if I take that out. That's u squared. u squared. Plus four u. Four u. Plus seven plus seven. Now, I would try to factor this, right? Oh, let me write this one. However, there's like an invisible one here, right? Yep. What's one times seven? Seven. Yep. Seven. There's only one pair that gives me seven, and does that pair add to give me four? No. No. Nope. What that means is that this part is prime. Prime is just the math word for not factorable. Mostly everything we've done so far is factorable, but now we're starting to see things that cannot be factorable. And you have to be able to identify when it can and when it can't. Okay? So basically, if you can find the magic numbers that work, then it can be factored. If you can't find the magic numbers that work, then you can say it's prime. That's why I tried to train you guys to do the square root and get that long list. Because if you say it's prime and then it's not, it's just because you didn't go and oh, look at oh. all the factors, okay? But you kind of, oh, for something like that, you can get it because of your for you. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. So this still was factored. Right, right. It just can't go, any, can't further. go any further. Right, so if I were to finish, I would type this in as my answer. answer I would right. not say that the original was prime because I did factor something okay. out, didn't yeah. I? Yes, it's only this one factor here that's prime and that's what you want that's how you know 
that something is factored completely is if each factor is prime all by itself, okay? Meaning it can't be factored anymore. So like for example, just as an example, when you factored something like x squared minus y squared into x plus y and x minus y, notice that this can't be factored anymore. There's nothing that they have in common. It's not a trinomial. It doesn't fit one of the binom the squares or the cubes. So this guy is prime. This guy is also prime. And that's how you know you factored completely, is when every single factor you have is prime. Okay? And monomials are always considered prime because they're their own little guy. Okay? So you had to factor out the common monomial. This thing cannot be factored anymore, and that thing cannot be factored anymore. So I'm done. What about that example? What do those guys have in common? Uh, they have u to the 5. Yep, to the 5 and 3. So then that gives me 2. W two. to the second. Mm -hmm. yep, and 3 W. Uh-huh. And uh, minus 9. Minus 9. Yep. So if I multiply those, I get 18. Yep. And my numbers have to subtract to give me 3. I think we do have some numbers like that, don't we? Yep, yep. Six times three. So they have to subtract, six, but yeah. the bigger one needs to be negative. Yeah. This is just going to be part of my final answer. Right. I don't use it in, because I'm only factoring this, so I don't use it in my steps here. So minus 6w plus 3w yeah. minus 9. Yeah. Chop it. Uh, I got. Yeah. Yeah. What do those guys have in common? Three. So w, w minus, minus three. three. Yeah. So w minus three, and then the leftovers. Two w plus three. Yeah. And bring down. Bring three three w down. Plus five. Don't forget him. Otherwise, it'll count you wrong. Because remember, this has to multiply to give you the original. And if you forget that guy, is that going to multiply to give you the original? No. You'll never get the get six, your, right? Your, yeah. See, don't forget that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So see the difference. This one was prime, so I stopped. This one was not prime, so I had to keep going, okay? I think everything that y'all been doing so far, you have been able to factor. It's just now you have to start keeping in mind, there may be some times where you can't, okay? You do one step and then you're stuck. Oh, this was the one where you said, am I done? Um, uh, something happened to my focus here. I think it's this button. Yeah. Okay. So, do these guys have anything in common? 3 and x to the 4th. Good. Oh, wrong color. 3 and x to the 4th. So, when I factor that out, remember, I have to have two terms, right? Yep. What's going to be the first term? What's going to be the second term? Uh, U, to, yeah, U, to U to the fourth. This is actually perfect squares. So what you, is it going to have that one of U, U minus one and U plus one? Like? One times one makes U, but what times what makes U to the fourth? Uh, U squared. U, U squared. squared times yeah. a U squared. One plus U squared, one minus U squared. Correct. Now we know that when we have squares and a plus, yeah, okay. this one is prime. So I don't need to factor this one anymore. But when you have squares and a minus, this does have to factor some more. And don't forget to bring your other guys down, right? Don't forget to bring that factor down. Don't forget to bring that factor down. Otherwise, it'll never multiply to give you all that. Yes, 1 times 1 plus, minus, and what times what is u squared? u plus, and 1 minus u mm -hmm. squared. And now we know that's prime, that's prime, that's prime, and these guys are always considered prime. So that is factored completely. Okay? This is your final answer. Bless you. You just have know, to start recognizing. That. So sure. That first prime right here? The first factoring here? I'm just looking at where you have prime out there. This one.
Optimus Prime. Yeah, I'm just trying to look at it so in my mind mentally see why it can't be broken down anymore. Because it's a positive. Let's look at it. If you did one plus you and one plus you, you're going to have Seven. one plus you, you plus you. you. Plus plus you squared. squared. These right. don't go away. Go away. Yeah, so you're not going to get that. Right? I'm just looking at it to see. If you do this, right? It'll go away, yeah. You get uh, one, you get minus you, you get minus, minus you, and you get plus you no, squared. Not, yeah. But those don't go, go away either, either, do they? they they're, gonna add, yeah. they're never going to cancel each other out okay. because they have to have the same sign, don't they? Yes, so that's yes. why we cannot factor it yeah. when it's that's a true. plus with two squares. So, that problem was flipped around, because huh? if just say that's flipped, and you had the... The minus and, here? Yeah. And the plus there? And then, yeah. Then basically this guy would yeah, be over here in the, be back. in the back. That's all it would be. It and would it don't matter. It don't matter what order right. the little so, carts are in, right? right. Yep. As long as all the carts are there. I'm going to pause it, but I want you to try this one, because this one's a good one. Okay, what should we do first? Uh, everything that's a light you want to take out. So you want to say, I put um, 2x cubed. Yeah. And then you'll have y to the 4 minus, uh, what did I get? 16. Mm -hmm, good. And so then and that? I brought, I brought 2x cubed down, and then I said y squared mm -hmm. uh, plus 4, and then y squared minus 4. Mm -hmm. And then I left the first one the way it is. This one? 2x cubed. Uh huh. And I brought, I, I got two answers. <laughs> I, 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 Cause I worked it out. Okay, uh -huh. so I'm gonna do it the way you just showed it. So bring that down, prime factor down. Uh huh. And then for that last part, you should have y plus two and y minus two. Uh huh. But then I also worked it out and had two x cubed where you got v plus two squared and v minus two squared. I worked that, I did. This something. one? Yeah, I worked that back out. Oh, you can't remember yeah, we I talked know, about I know, that? I was just trying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, maybe she tried to I mean, you could, but then if you multiplied all your answers together, you wouldn't get this. Yeah, you would get it. Yeah, okay. Said, yeah. And for these, it's like a headache to multiply all that out, right? So I would just hope that we factored it correctly because I wouldn't have wasted test time to try to multiply that out. Okay. Let's see. Now we're getting into the cubes. I don't think I have too much. Oh, yay. Then some easy ones and I think a couple of word problems and that's it. Okay, so these are, they put them together. So I wanted to have both. So notice I have some that have a sum and then some that have a difference, right? And for all of the cube problems, I try to do that. Put a plus and put a minus so you can see both, okay? Now, I want you to notice what the formula looks like on your little paper. But when I write it down, I'm going to write it down differently, okay? So... For a difference of squares, I like to put the formula underneath because then if I do it, I can make it my answer underneath. So the formula says, and I'm going to use a and b again. It says a cubed minus b cubed equals a minus b. And then on the paper, it says, right here. It just doesn't have A's and B's. It has X's and Y's. Oh, okay. But yeah, same thing. Me. Okay, you're I don't like to okay, okay. use X's and Y's. Because yes, okay. a lot of times your problems so are going to have X's and Y's. Right. right. Okay, so I did A okay, cubed okay. minus B cubed equals A minus B. Now, instead of doing A squared, the first guy squared, I don't like to write it like that because that will confuse almost everyone. Okay. So what I like to do is I like to write it as a times a. Isn't a times a the same thing yeah. as a squared, yeah. right? Then I'm gonna put my plus sign from the formula and then it's a times b. And then the back guy, instead of putting b squared, I'm gonna put b times b, okay? And the reason why I do that is because that square will throw people off. If your, let's first get, for example, if your A, okay, if your A is X squared, a lot of times people will just put X squared here, 
and that's wrong because they see the formula with the square and they already have x squared and so they put x squared there but really it should be x squared times x squared which would mean it would be x to the fourth okay so you have to be careful on what your a's are and i really suggest following this formula then following the a squared and the b squared thing okay because then you just multiply everybody together and you put them in the correct spots and you're done another thing that you need to know you're gonna have this sheet of paper so you're gonna know what signs to put but if you start getting into the habit like i am it takes too much effort to go search for things if i just memorize some of them then i'm gonna save some time on my test so i usually try to remember some of this stuff and this is one of the ones that i try to remember um, if you have a cube here, notice that whatever sign is here, that's the exact same sign that goes in the first parentheses, right? So if this is a minus, this is going to be a minus. And it's the same with the positive, the sum of cubes. If that's a plus, then in the first parentheses, I'm going to have a plus, okay? The second one, the second sign that comes up is going to be the opposite of the first sign that comes up. So this one would be a negative. Notice here I have a plus because that was negative. And then the last guy is always going to be positive, always. So it's always the same, the opposite, and then plus. That's the pattern for the signs. The same, the opposite, and then plus. And then here it's the single guys, here you're putting the first two guys together, here you're putting the first and the last together, and then there you're putting the last guys together, right? You're just multiplying all the different combinations of those, those people. Plus, always. Mm -hmm. Now again, this is the hard part is figuring out what is it that's being cubed, okay? So I like to write it like this. Some people just do it in their head, but I like to figure out what exactly is being cubed to give me 64. What is cubed to give me 64? Uh, what times itself three times gives me 64? Four times, four, three times. Uh-huh, four times, four times four. Yep. So this should be a four. What times what times what gives me 27 three three and then w times w times w will give me oh, w I cubed right I, I like to do them separate anyway it's okay i like to do the number first and then the variables <coughs> so then obviously my a is going to be the four so this guy is my a and this guy inside this parentheses is my b so when i go to apply my formula I'm just going to have a, which is 4, minus from the formula, three and 3w for the b. Here I have to do a times a. What is 4 times 4? 16. 16. Plus, what is a times b? 4 times 3w? 12w. 12w. And then finally, what is b times b? 3w times 3w? 9w squared. 9w squared. And this is the answer. Now, remember what we mentioned about these formulas. If this trinomial could have been factored into two other bubbles, the formula would have had all three of those bubbles there. It wouldn't have had one short bubble and one long bubble. It would have had three short ones, right? But the fact that the formula did not give me three short bubbles means that that second part is prime. You can't factor it. And if you're not sure, you could always try. But 16 times... 9 is 144, and out of all the factors of 144, I don't think any of them are going to add to give me 12. They're going to be too big to give me 12 when I add them. But I always tell people, that second, the long guy is not going to factor. It's just not. Otherwise, the formula would have been different. I promise the older, <laughs> way older mathematicians did all that work to come up with that formula. They know that that's the shortest it can be. <laughs> that's the simplest it'll get. Okay, what is being cubed here? V. Aha, uh -huh. so A is going to be V. What is being cubed here? Five. Five. So when I give my answer, 
it's going to be A plus my B. And then what's A times B? Or B times V? V squared. V squared. Put my minus sign. What's V times 5? 5V. 5V. Put my plus sign. What's 5 times 5? 25. 25. And this is it, the final answer. Okay? So you got to recognize what is being cubed, put them there in their spots with the same sign, and then start multiplying them all together, right? This guy times himself, those multiplied together, and then this guy times <coughs> himself. And then just put the correct signs. The second sign will be the opposite of the first, and the last one will always be a plus, okay? So just give you another example. I'm making this one on my own. But let's say we have, um, what letter have I not used? Y. I have Y. I'll say 8Y cubed plus 1. So what is A? What's being cubed is mm -hmm. a Y being cubed. Y, and what about the number? 8. Uh, 2 times 2 times 2. Uh huh. Yeah, and what about B? Can't be cute. One can't, one it can. One times one, one times one, one is yeah, one, yeah, right? Yeah, look, yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. So then remember, these guys as they are, with whatever sign is right there, one, right? then multiply this guy times himself. Right. Four, four y. Squared. squared. Yep. Those two multiplied together. Two y. And this guy times himself. One. One. And since that's the same, the okay, next one should plus. be opposite. Opposite, I mean, and then the last one's plus. Always plus. So you start well, you seeing the pattern, sure, right? Yeah. You yeah. You made it easy. Okay. That's like if I memorized what that formula is, right? Then I could do it a lot faster. There's more, so get more practice. I just wanted you to kind of see it. What happens if you knew what the formula was and how it works? And you, it helps to write this, but you don't have to. I mean, you could just recognize and start writing things in here. But I like to write it down so people can see where these guys came from and then where all the rest came from. Okay, I'm gonna, I know they give me some more, at least I thought they did, oh no they don't, no more cubes, so you only have one topic with those cubes, and that's it, okay, now this is back to factoring, here's the big question, there's a lot of pluses and minuses, okay, how many terms are in this problem here? Two. Nope. Anybody else want to suggest how many terms are in that problem? Uh, four. Very. Eight plus four, eight how many terms are in how many terms are in here? There's a lot of pluses and minuses, and normally pluses and minuses distinguish our terms, right? But not. So what you got, three pluses and one minus in there? So how many terms do I have? Four total? No. Uh, I, I don't know, I'm gonna stop guessing. There's only three terms. Cause okay? what you're talking about, the pluses is the term? Right, but this plus is part of a factor because this guy is being multiplied by himself, three, right? Yeah. So this is only one term. This guy is being multiplied by this guy, isn't it? So that is only one term. And then this guy's a single guy, but he is his own term, right? So there's only three terms in this fact in this problem. Just three. And we know how to factor trinomials. Three terms is a trinomial, right? However, it's very ugly because of that x plus 16. 
normally it's not x plus 16 squared normally it's like just x squared right minus 12 x and then plus 35 it's never this thing in parentheses squared and then the thing in the parentheses repeating again so my favorite analogy to use is like when you go watch these music video award shows right um you have the stars that sit in the audience but if they need to go up to the stage to either accept an award or to perform they never leave the audience open with the because you're talking about whole entourages when you're talking about these stars right so you don't see the whole entourage get up and then a big hole in the audience do you they have what are called substitutors okay so they're people that are hired to literally sit in those empty chairs while the stars seat, seat, yeah, seat oh, fillers while all the stars go up and present and do their thing right you've got these seat fillers so that when a camera spans the audience it's not just this big old hole in the seats right <laughs> That's exactly the same kind of idea that we're going to do here. It's called substitution, right? But it really is a seat filler. So if it hurts your eyes or your brain <laughs> to see the Y plus 16 all over the place, you can make it go away by using something a little bit nicer. Like maybe instead of X's, I'm going to use Y. So you're going to say, let Y equal this x plus 16 that I see happening all over the place okay if I do that then this little thing in the parentheses becomes a y then my square on the outside my 12 this thing in the parentheses becomes a y and that doesn't have it so it just comes down and now it looks prettier right it looks like what you're used to doing okay so can you come up with the factors that multiply to give you 35, but add to give you 12? Seven times five. Seven and five. And then they would have to be the same, so they both have to be what? Negative. And <coughs> can I shortcut? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. There's no number in There's front, no right? There, yeah. So we can say y minus seven, seven. and y minus five. five right. But notice that the problem they gave me did not have y's in it, right? I put the seat filler in there, but now the star has to come back, right? <laughs> so you put the X back in there, and it'll be X plus 16 instead of the Y, minus 7. And then here, X plus 16 minus 5. Oops, forgot the 1. And then, because these are like terms, you can simplify that and say X plus 9, right? And then if you combine those, you can say x plus 11. And this is the final answer. So it's a lot easier and faster than actually squaring this, right? Foiling this out, distributing this, combining all the like terms, and then having to factor it at the end, okay? Because I could have done that problem differently. You did x plus 9 and x plus 11 at the end, but I'm like, there ain't no way it can be the same. Okay, the this one actually is going to have four parentheses. Yeah, see, I, 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 so, I let's see, what is repeating? This thing is repeating, right? Yep. So then I'm going to say let, and always pick a different variable than what's there, so I'm going to choose y. Let y be that thing that is in parentheses. And if you want, you can even put it in parentheses to help you visually. So this parentheses is going to become a y with the square on it. This parentheses next to the 10 is going to become a y, and then you have your plus 24, right? And then what two numbers multiply to give you 24, but add to give you 10? 6 times 4. 6 and 4. So there's no number in front, so I can shortcut y plus 6, y plus 4. Yeah, that's what I, I That's that, good. I got that part. Then you've got a back sub, right? You've got to put the star back in. So this guy is going to become x squared minus 5x. And this guy is going to become x squared minus 5x. That's what I have. Keep the plus That's 6, keep wrong. the right plus there. 4. I had the 5x wrong. Yeah. But notice this is a trinomial and this is a trinomial. Uh, yeah. There's 6. Do I have factors of 6 that add to give you 5? Yep, 6 times 1. Those don't add to give me 5. But you can subtract them to give but 5. But I have to add to get this. So what other numbers multiply to add to give me this? Two times three. Two times three. 
And since they have to be, they have to be the same sign, right? Yeah. The bigger one needs to be three. Negative. Three, uh -huh. yeah. So I get this. Now over here, again, no number in front, so I can't shortcut. The numbers need to multiply to give me four, but add to give me five. So what numbers multiply to give me four, but add to give me five? Four, uh, four and one. Uh-huh, four and one. And they have to have, oh, I messed up over here. These have to have the same sign, right? And it's supposed to be so minus. Minus two, yeah. Uh-huh. There we go. Because then yeah, that'll right, give me a positive right. six, right? Six. Right, right, right? Same thing here. These guys have to be the same right, sign, right. and so negative they're both there. negative. Right. Yeah. And I made another error because I put I four see. and, <laughs> and one. one. There you go. So notice you have four bubbles at the end of all this. You have x minus two, x minus three, x minus four, and x minus one. This is finally all prime. And so that's finally your answer. Yeah, that's what I'm Can you just leave that up there yeah. for a second? Because doesn't order how you get. It doesn't matter the order. Right? Nope. As long as easy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, wow. Here we go. <laughs> okay. Wow. So now we're gonna start doing things a little bit differently because now we're gonna start getting into solving equations. So I know you knew that factoring was not just because they wanted to do some fun stuff with numbers, right? There's a purpose to knowing how to factor, okay? And now we're going to finally get into that purpose. And the purpose is, is it's the algebraic way to solve equations of polynomials. So if you have a polynomial equation, the easiest way to solve it is to try to factor it and then set each factor equal to zero. Okay, and I'll talk more about that when we get to one of those. But for right now, they really want to talk about what happens when you have um, like trinomials down here or when you have perfect squares or perfect cubes down here. They don't want to just know about what happens when you have linear things down there. Okay, but in order to warm us up to that topic, they first talk about what happens if the denominator is linear. Okay, meaning just something times x plus a number right and so that's what is down here and the directions say find the all excluded values for the expression which is the same thing as saying find all the values of u for which the expression is undefined this is the entire expression okay and that entire expression is a fraction is it not yep. and we know when fractions are undefined when are fractions undefined Uh, when they uh, uh, negative one. Nope, it has nothing to do with the number one. It has to do with the number zero. Oh, uh, when the uh, when it's not okay is when it's on oh, on the bottom or something. Uh huh. Like when that. the denominator. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is zero. Yeah. So another way of saying that in math symbols would be to set the denominator equal to zero. What is the denominator in this particular problem? This is fraction. It's four plus three u. Yep. That is the entire denominator. Oh, so it. my job is just to figure out what u value is gonna make that denominator zero and that's the guy that I cannot include. That's gonna be the excluded value, okay? He's the only number I can't plug in and get a number back out. Because if I plug this number in, I'm gonna get zero down there and the calculator's gonna tell me error, right? So let's go figure that out because that's just a linear equation. Those are easy to solve, right? We've passed 410, all of us, right? Yes, so <laughs> we can solve this puppy. And we figured out that u equal to negative 4 thirds is the bad guy. <laughs> Bless, you. Bless you. He's the one number that if I plug it in here, threes are gonna cancel, I'm gonna have four plus a negative four, which is zero, right? And I cannot do three divided by zero in my calculator. It just will not compute, okay? So this is the one bad guy. And that's it, that's all they wanna know is who's the bad guy. The one person that when I put him into the situation, nothing happens, right? <laughs> At all, okay? okay? So the same thing for the next example. Who's the bad guy in this one? 9 plus 3y. Mm -hmm. 
What value for y though? Nine plus three y okay, so is what I need to figure out. Okay, so then you're gonna take minus nine, minus nine. Mm-hmm. Three y equals negative nine, so you're gonna have negative three. Yep. Y equals negative three. This is the bad guy. The last one's the easiest one. I don't even know why. Oh, it's to confuse you. Because notice there's X's up there. Do we care what happens upstairs? No, because no, we just focus on the denominator. Right. You only want to know where it's yeah. undefined. And that yeah. only has to do with the bottom. Yeah. So it's just this guy, which gives you what number? X positive 12. Mm -hmm. So okay. this is the bad guy. Okay. It gets more complicated, of course, right? They'll never make it that easy <laughs> and stay that easy. So let's see the other ones. Look at these denominators. It's the same directions, which is why I didn't repeat it. It says find all excluded values. Okay, those are the directions. So it's the same situation. I have to set this thing equal to zero. But I know how to factor that thing. What numbers multiply to give you 27 but subtract to give you six. Nine times three. Mm-hmm. So nine and three, and they're gonna have different signs, but the bigger plus guy nine, should nine, be plus. Nine, yeah. Right. Now, remember, a product, I'm gonna multiply two things together. The only way I'm gonna end up with zero is if this guy equals zero or if this guy equals zero. That's the only way you'll get zero after you multiply them together, right? So what V value is going to make this factor zero? Negative nine. Negative nine. And what Probably V number? Three. three. So if I were to plug in negative nine in here and here, let's go check. Just I'm just double checking, right? Negative nine squared plus six times negative nine minus 27. Does that make the denominator zero? Yep. Now let's do three. Three squared plus six times three minus 27. Does that make the denominator zero? So we have two bad guys. And in the computer, you just have to make sure you put a comma in between. So you got to solve for both of them. Both of them. Mm -hmm. What about this problem? Am I factoring the top? No, just the bottom. Right. It's, it, when it says restricted values or excluded values, it's only the bottom. But how do you factor that? W2, it's going to be W plus 1 and W minus 1. Right. You got to use that formula. And so then this guy has to equal 0 or this guy. Yep. We learning today, y'all. I like this. I like this. We learning. I like this. Thank you. I got two. Now, I don't know why this topic is here. You may see it later because don't you have to know how to solve an equation before you can do this, right? Yeah. But for some reason, they gave me this first and then now they're going to tell me solve equations. <laughs> so as you can guess, it's the same stuff. You just don't have this. You have the equation to start off with and then you just go, right? Okay. So they take you in baby steps, which is weird because you already did it. <laughs> But if you have it already factored, what did you do when it was already factored? <laughs> it already did all the hard part. Yeah, it's so already factored for you. So what do you do from here? Oh, so then you minus equals zero. Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah, three plus u equals zero. Or three plus u equals zero. And so then here nine, you nine. add, you get nine, you divide, yeah. you get nine halves. Yeah. Here you can minus three, and you got your two answers. Nine halves comma negative three. So they're going backwards. Why are they trying to trick you? They always it's like they're trying to trick you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Here, that, same thing. Is that like math? Is that what it is to do? It's just the way they ordered them. I don't know okay. why they oh, ordered right. them in that direction. Yeah. And it might be that order in my list because my list goes according to what's in the book. Mm -hmm. Whereas yours, because it's artificial intelligence, it only gives you what you're ready to learn. So if you haven't solved the equations, you're probably not going to get this problem yet. Okay. 
Okay. You'll probably get asked to do all the equation business first, and then it'll give you this problem because you need to know how to solve an equation to do this problem. Okay. And then they always do it in baby steps. They first introduced you to this, like, oh, hey, this can only equal zero if this factor or this factor is equal to zero. So let's go figure out what's going to make this factor equal to zero. And then let's go figure out what's going to make this factor equal to zero. And both of those are your answer. Okay. I already kind of said it all in one nutshell, right, with the first problem. <laughs> but it's the same thing. So here, if I add 7, I get positive 7. If I divide by 4, I get 7 fourths. Here, it depends on what you want to do. You, you can... I'll, I'll take away the 4. So you take away the 4, so yeah. you still have negative Z, but you then now it's going to have negative 4. four. Yeah, you do, so you're get positive four you red. divide by negative yeah, and you get a positive. Yeah. So then you have two answers. You could also just add the Z over, right? And you'd have 4 equals Z, which yeah, is the same right. thing. Okay, so now we get to some where they're not. This one's ready for me, okay? I can factor that. How do you factor that? The first thing you always have to do when you're factoring the, is what? Uh, common denominator of that. Mm -hmm. Two. The common factor. I mean, I mean but four, yes. Four. 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 And any letters? Uh, y. Yep. And, and then so. You have, uh, y plus three. Mm -hmm. Equals zero. And these are factors. So yeah, you so can four, say. Yeah, 4y equals 0, yep. 5 plus 3 equals 0. Yep. So. so then what do you get here for y? 0 over 4. Which is? 0. 0. And here you get? Negative 3. Negative 3. And so those are your two answers. This one, though, the next one, is not ready for you to factor. They're not even on the same side, right? You cannot factor it unless they're together, okay? Just FYI, your problems always have to equal zero before you can start factoring it, okay? So every single problem, if you're asked to solve an equation and you see exponents somewhere in there, isn't there an exponent somewhere in this problem? Yeah. There. So it had to equal zero on one side. Here I have an exponent somewhere, which means it has to equal zero on one side. It has to, okay? Now, you have two choices, right? You can move the y squared over there, or you can move the 17y to the left. It doesn't matter, but which one would you want to move? Uh, man, we move the 17y. Sure. We make it positive on uh -huh. So I have y squared positive 17y, and then now I have nothing over here, right? Because they cancel, because they canceled. But then I need to factor that. You got y's down there. You can bring it down. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna have y plus 17 mm -hmm. equals zero. So then those are your two factors: y equals zero and y plus 17 equals zero. Mm -hmm. And so this one's already solved. Yeah, so it's minus 17. And you get negative 17 negative for 17 the other. Mm-hmm. Oh, you can't see. So just keep that in mind. If you have powers, we know how to solve equations when they don't have powers, right? What's new is now the equations have powers. And when they have powers, you have to make sure you get it equal to zero before you start trying to factor, okay? That's the strategy when you're solving what they call quadratics, when you see squares, okay? But the same rule applies whether it's squares or cubes or to the fourth power. It doesn't matter how high the powers are. The same process. Get it equal to zero on one side and then factor and set all your factors equal to zero. So try these two. Let me pause for you try them. So when you factored this, how did you factor it? Uh, I put V on the outside. Mm -hmm. Not V on the outside, but inside, right? No, Do they have anything in common, all of them? This guy doesn't have any letters, and this guy doesn't have any numbers, right? Yeah, so, it's so there's nothing in oh, common well, all the way. Right, so okay. But so it is a trinomial. Yeah, so you're going to get, I put V minus 5. 
V minus 5. And v plus 3. Yep, those subtract to give yeah, me 2, so and the bigger guy has to be negative. Right. Good. Yeah, so, so then you get what? 0, and then you get V equals positive 5. Uh -huh. And then V equals negative 3. And you can always go straight from here to here. Yeah, you don't right. have to write that step. It helps if there's a bunch of junk going on in there. But when it's real simple like that, I mean, it's obvious, right? 5 minus 5 is 0, and negative 3 plus 3 is 0. So you have two answers. Good. What about this one? How do you factor this one? Uh, it's a trinomial. No letters, no numbers, so no GCF. Yeah, so it's going to be U minus 5, U minus 5? Yes, because 5 and 5 make 10 when you add, but they have to have the same sign, so, they so they're both negative. Yeah, so it's going to be both of your answers. It's going to be positive 5. Right. What happens when both of your answers are 5? What do you type in that box in Alex? Minus 5 squared. Nope, because then that would be positive 25, right? Different number. You get u equal to 5 here. You get u equal to 5 there. Because it's the same, you're only going to write one answer. If I plug in 5, it's going to turn out to give me 0, right? You got it right. Okay. What they call that is a repeated solution. That will be important not until you get to college algebra. But in college algebra, it's important whether it, whether it comes up twice, the same guy, or two different guys. Okay? It's called repeated what? Repeated solution. Repeated solution. Mm -hmm. And that's so like just when you get an answer, right? Repeat. Is that kind of the same thing? Like if you have a, like if you're doing like three point one four and it continues, you put your line over. It's kind of the same on your pot. Or that's a little bit different. Little bit that's different. like a re that stands for a repeated repeat. value. Okay. Uh huh. But this is a repeated solution. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And the reason why, well, I don't want to spill the beans now, but this, if knowing if it repeats or not, and how many times it repeats, will tell you something about the graph of this thing okay we won't talk about all those details until we get to college algebra but just knowing that that guy repeats twice i already know what's going to happen at five okay and that's where you'll be you'll be there by the time we end this semester right <laughs> like i can look at these and already know what they look like and that's that's the goal of college algebra so that you can look at stuff and kind of already know what it's going to look like on a graph you don't need the calculator to tell you you will know okay So the top one is equal to zero. It's already in order, real nice. We just have to factor it. But this one we cannot shortcut because it has a number in front. So, but if I multiply these together, I get six. And then what numbers add to give me five? Have to add to give me five. Three and two. Three and two. So then, and they have to be the same, so they both have to be plus, right? So three u and two u, that'll give me five. And then if I take what they have in common, these guys have 3u. 3 3 U, and then u plus 1. Bring down my plus. These guys have? 1 in common. No. Nope. 2 in common. 2 in common. 2 in common, then u plus 1, 2. One mm -hmm. So you have u plus 1 factored out. 3u plus 2. 3u plus 2. And then if I set that equal to 0, you have this guy equal to 0. Negative 1. And if you set that guy equal to 0. Negative 2. Over 3. Yep. You essentially, if you move over the two, you would get this, yeah, yeah, would and then you still have to stop, divide by three. Divide, right. Right. This one though is not ready, right? It doesn't equal zero. I see a power, but the thing is not equal to zero. So again, you have two choices. You can either move the four over there or you can move these two guys over there. What do you recommend? I mean, Personally, yeah, I don't like having to factor out negatives. Remember what we told you, if, you neg if it's negative in the front, you have to factor, it, factor out. it out. And if I move that over there, it's gonna turn negative, isn't right. it? So what my strategy is, is always make the guy with the highest exponent positive. So if it's already positive on this side, then that means I'm going to take these guys and move them over there. Right. If this were negative on this side, then I would move him over there so right. he could become positive. Okay. But I want the guy with the highest exponent to be a positive guy. Okay, so I don't have to worry about that negative junk. Okay, so I'm going to move these over there, which means I'm going to have nothing here. And I'm going to have a negative 11w right. 
and a positive 6. And so if I do my factoring business, because there is no GCF, 24, and they have to add to give me 11. 6 times 4 is 24. Oh, uh, 12 times. Nope, those won't add to give me 11. Keep going, keep going. 1 times 12. Nope, 1 times 12 is not 24. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. 24, and that is 2 times 12. What's the square root of 24? It's 4. So I can't go any further than the number 4. So it's 1 times 24. 2 times 12. 12. You already told me 4 times 6. There's Three another one. Aha. Uh -huh. And do those add to give me yeah, 11? Both gotta be negative though. Yes. Same negative. Okay. So negative 8, negative 3. Oops, I forgot the W. That's important, right? Those have to combine to give me that. And then my plus 6. So chop it down the middle. What do these guys have in common? 4W. 4 W. So what w am I left? Good. And, and then, then bring, three in common. bring down the minus and then minus. the three. Mm -hmm. yep. So what do you get here? Uh, two W. I mean one. Just regular W. W. W plus plus two. Plus two. It's not plus. What's minus. a positive and a oh, negative? Oh, that's right. That's negative. negative. That's right. Remember, it has to multiply to give me that. Right. So then I have W minus 2 and 4W minus 3. That is what should equal 0. Now, that, Or put it over here to keep it the same. Does it matter whether the equal 0 is on the left or the right? It doesn't. So then I get W equal to positive and W equal to... You should have to move the positive 3. Uh-huh. And then you have to do what with the 4? You have to divide by 4. Mm -hmm. So 2 and 3 4.